All right. UCF head football coach Gus Malzahn now with us on 365 Sports. Coach, I'm sorry about that. If you don't mind that first question about being a part of the Big 12 for a full year and the, the larger playoff model, how much has that given your, your program even more of a spark? Yeah, it, it was uh, it was really good for us to go through. Um, you know, anytime you get a new conference, you know it's going to be a learning experience. Uh, really quality teams, you got to play well to win. Uh, so it was good. You know, the unique thing this year is we only played two teams that were on our schedule last year in conference. So it's almost like we're starting over. Uh, you know, with the new uh, four teams from out west, we play them all. So, uh, but it, it's you know, it was a good experience, and we're looking forward to this year. Coach, you uh, have done some yeoman's work in the in the transfer portal this off season. You brought in a, a new quarterback in KJ Jefferson, who uh, you know no no uh, no offense to Senator Plumley, who we we just talked to at uh, Big Twelve Pro Days, and that's what I will call him for the rest of his life. But uh, but KJ is a bigger model uh, than, than 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 John is. What has been your kind of assessment, and how has he kind of taken to this offense? It seems really tailored to him anyway before you even have to find out what his special skill sets are. Yeah, KJ's the guy that I recruited in high school, same year as, as uh, recruited Bo Nix. And so we got a chance to get to know each other. Um, you know, his skill set really feel, fits what we like to do. Uh, you know, he's a big guy. He's got a great arm. Uh, he's thrown for almost 8,000 yards. He throws a great deep ball. And then, you know, he can run too. So uh, he's an experienced guy. And so when he went in the portal, I mean, we circled him, and we, we were glad to get him. Coach, what was on the to-do list? I mean, obviously, besides personnel gains, uh, like a K.J. Jefferson, uh, among others, but when you kind of summarized the season, got together with your coaching staff and said, hey, here's what we got to go and, and get done as a football program, what, what were the top two or three things on that list? Yeah, you know, I think more than anything, it was probably depth, quality depth. Um, you know, we had to get more depth at linebacker, and uh, – so we hit the portal right after the season. I think the, the best thing we did was hold on to our top guys. Um, you know, we really didn't lose very many guys, um, and we held on to our top ones. And then, you know, we went in the portal and addressed those needs. Um, you know, we, we got some experienced linebackers. Um, I think that was great. And we added to, you know, different positions, um, guys that could come in with experience that have been successful other places. Gus Malzahn with us on 365 Sports. Building the roster, you mentioned that depth. Was that, and I think you mentioned that to us last year, is that one of the things that you weren't quite there yet because of the transition from where you were, even though a program that was good, into a conference like the Big 12? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Um, you know, like I said, anytime you go in a new conference, there's a learning curve, and we were really trying to build quality depth, but obviously there's nothing like going through it, and and seeing what reality is. And so it was good for us to get that foundation of that first year, what we needed to do as a program uh, to be able to compete for a championship in that league. And really, that's really what was on our mind. Uh, you know, it's a really good good, good conference. Uh, like I said, the parity part, every week you're playing a good team. Um, you know, there's no off weeks. And so that was really uh, our mindset once we got through with the season as far as addressing our needs. How much more uh, is it – I know it's probably not as much a relief as I may be making it sound like, but when you would have been transferring into a new conference, say, five years ago, you would have still had, you know, like a, to create so, so, some sort of a buffer zone to create the depth. Now you can kind of shortcut it a little bit with the portal, or am I making too much of how valuable the portal is? No, I, I think you're exactly right. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, the needs you can address now in the portal age, it's a lot easier to address those than it once was. Um, but like I said, I think a big key to, to program success is going to be keeping their top players and not losing them. And that way you can have continuity and everything that goes with that. And, you know, we've, we've had great success in the portal, but, uh, I think it's even more important that we kept, you know, most of our top guys. Coach, how much do you still learn football in the off season? I mean, you've been around a long time. You're one of those that when people talk about, you know, great offensive minds, you're a name that comes up pretty quickly. How often are you still learning at this stage of your career? And how do you go about the learning when and if you, you go about doing that? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, we have our foundation that we're always going to, 
uh, you know, have, and we're not going to vary from that. But I think having wrinkles and trying to be cutting edge with, with new things, new approaches, uh, you know, I, I rely probably more on the guys that have been in my circle, you know, that have either coached with me or, and, you know, t- uh, you know, over the years and all that. But I think you got to stay uh, on the cutting edge and, and have wrinkles each year to what you do best. We had G.J. Kenny on this week, Coach, and he can't stop talking about what he learned with you, uh, playing for you, being on your staff too. Your thoughts about when you saw him, and of course he had a dynamic high school and, and then had a really good career at Tulsa. You know that. What about him, and what do you see from him as far as his growth as a head coach? Yeah, you know, I think the sky's the limit for, for G.J. Um, you know, he is a – He's a young guy, but he is uh, very intelligent, and he has the unique unique ability to make really, really good decisions when the pressure is the highest. And uh, he relates well to players. Um, he did a great job for us the first year we were here. You know, we had Dylan Gabriel mm-hmm. coming back. You know, we had him for three games, and we were I think we were the number one team in the country statistically. He gets hurt last play of the game, and we had to throw a true freshman in there. And uh, he ended up winning seven games, and we we had a big bowl win against Florida. And GJ deserves a lot of credit for his development and really just helping me as my right hand person. But uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, it doesn't surprise me at all that he had the success he had last year in top ten offense. What is it? Uh, what does it mean to you that you know? Again, you've been in, in the business for a while now. That you have, like, you're coming to the Big Twelve with Kenny Dillingham. You, you know him. Uh, you know you're, you're going to be playing yeah. in Texas more, even though he's not in the conference. You know, you know, Rhett Lashley won't uh, stop singing your praises either, and how much he learned from you. But uh, you know, there's just uh, guys all over the place that now that that you've coached with that are head coaches on their own. Yeah, I tell you what, first of all, those guys are excellent human beings. They're in it for the right reasons. Uh, they're all very talented. I've, I've been real blessed to have a lot of young guys, um, you know, coach with me over the years. And, um, you know, Eli Drinkwitz, you know, Mike Norvell, you know, all those guys. And I'm real proud of those guys and what they're doing. They're doing it the right way. Um, and they're all really good coaches. Coach, what's it like being a, a head coach in college football now versus, uh, let's say, 10 years ago? I mean, what? how drastic of a difference are we talking? You know all the conversation that's out there these days about the various issues going on, but just how drastic of a difference from your point of view is your time spent and kind of what you focus on? Yeah, it's probably more like three years. I mean, uh, <laughs> True. there's been more changes in college football uh, the last two years than any time I've been in it by, by a long shot. Um you know, you've got to be more of uh, the uh, what do you? The roster management is so important. Mm-hmm. Um, it's you know a little bit of a GM. Uh, the role of a head coach in college football is has really changed. And you know what I love to do is I love coaching players on the field. So you know, once you spring practice, fall camp, that's the funnest part for me. Um, but you know, the, the new reality is one of the big jobs is putting together a competitive roster. Um, each year and keeping uh, the integrity of your program and what you believe and your core beliefs and not vary for them from them and, and that, that's the challenge I think for all coaches this day and time how much more difficult has that made spring ball if at all I was just thinking there wasn't as much attention it seemed like paid to it just across the the national landscape escape the as there normally kind of has been and I know that's sort of probably always been something blown out of proportion because it just feeds the beast of the off season. But it does feel like now it's it's sort of an afterthought because you don't know if the guys you're coaching are going to be in the portal a week from now. So how did you, as a program, go into spring ball kind of knowing that and, and what was your approach? Yeah, and that was different that you knew the portal was opened up after spring ball and, you know, hey, we're going to have the same roster. I think every coach in America kind of went through that. We just chose to be completely honest and up front. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to hold true to to developing and grinding and pushing and coaching and competing and everything uh, that went, you know, but uh, definitely, um, you know, in the back of coaches' minds, you know, you may have a new roster. Like I said, I think, you know, quite a few times I've said, but we were fortunate enough to keep, you know, our top guys, which I think is, is, is very important. When you watch a game on television and let's say you have an off week or it, Whatever. Whenever you're watching football, do you ever watch it as a fan? 
Uh, you know, really, if you get done with your with your game, sometimes especially if you play an early game, you can get home and try to enjoy maybe another conference or out of conference game. If you're watching the in conference game, you're thinking about who your opponents, how you're going to play, mm-hmm. and all that. You know, probably when I get the most relaxed is when I, if I ever get a chance to watch one of my former players play in the NFL, and that's when you can really let your guard down and try to enjoy it. The appeal was there for you to go to UCF. Obviously, you've been there. I think you're entering year four. Is that same appeal that you saw the same appeal that high school prospects, transfers, or others are seeing too? Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, this place is a gold mine. It really is. Our best days are ahead of us, and I, I don't think it's going to be very long at all. Everything is set uh, now that we're in the Big 12 Power 5 Conference. Uh, we're right in the middle of the state. Uh, we're in Orlando. There's no NFL team. The best brands in the world are here. You think about the NIL, the branding, everything that goes with the new age of college football, it's set up. So I'm real excited and uh, looking forward to, to the future. Well, I, I guess the checklist, you know, outside of the NIL and the brands, like when you go to a place, the facility is good. Do they have alumni base? Like all you had to do is walk around campus on a game day. And like, you know, I yeah, that would have sold me pretty quick if I, if I were you. Because it's, it's, it's an atmosphere I think a lot of people don't know about because you guys haven't been in the top uh, in the Power Five. But, uh, yeah. Coach, I was there last year for the Baylor game. And, man, it is hopping on Saturdays around your state. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. You know, we're a young school. We're, I think we're the youngest Power Five uh, school. And uh, average age of our alumni is 36. We graduate 19 or 20,000 every single year. We're one of the fastest, uh, you know, growing fan bases, too. So very unique um, and very exciting. Gus, uh, Norvell, Dillingham, Kenny, you mentioned that. Eli Drinkwitz at Missouri. Jake Spavital, who was at Cal last year, was at Texas yeah. State. You know Jake. He's now a part of Dave Aranda's staff. What about what he brings to the table? What And, and of course, that open offense that he's going to run this year. Well, he's really good, too. Um, you know, he's got his own version, but he's really good. Um, you know, when he has a when he has a real quarterback, good things happen. That's what his history shows. And he's real creative. Um so yeah, he's gonna he's gonna do a really good job for him. I think you you had him when he was just a, a quality control coach, right? Yeah, he was a GA. I think uh, he was a GA. Uh, Norvell, I think, was there the same time he was there the last year I was at Tulsa. So a hell of a that was two pretty, Yeah, that was two pretty good young guys helping him. <laughs> no question. You know, back in the day. <laughs> if you don't mind, uh, when you watch film, and it you know we've there's been so many incredible coaches offense defense whatever different styles different schemes how is it that there always is something new and a wrinkle do you do you ever wake up at like two o'clock in the morning and write something down in a notepad or whatever that that comes to mind because it, it that's what's great just like science or anything else it always is changing yeah you know I, I think I think there is some of that from time to time probably not much as it used to be but still from time to time you may have an idea um you know, that kind of fits within what's going on. And, uh, you know, I think being a former high school coach has really helped me in this high school Mm -hmm. uh, world also. And, you know, all those guys you're talking about, I mean, you know, I think last year, I think it was four of the top ten offenses in college football was from our tree. And um, so we'll share ideas from time to time. Sometimes that, you know, I'll turn on the film of Chip Lindsey is at North Carolina last year that's been with me and, kind of see what they're doing, rep, same way, Eli. And so a lot of times, you know, you just kind of share ideas and and, and look off what what each other's doing, you know, successfully. You already had R.J. Harvey. You've added Penny Boone. How much of a treasure chest, along with what you also have at the depth chart at that position, do you have this year? Yeah, we're real excited about that room. Um, You know, we've got some really, really talented guys that I think are NFL guys, along with K.J. Jefferson. You know, you're talking about some big guys that, that uh, you know, have been successful. So we're very excited about that. And, um, you know, we, we'll have a chance. And, you know, we, we believe in running the football, playing fast and throwing it deep. And so it fits really to what we're looking for. I know you have to worry about your roster management, and I'll wrap it up with this. But at the same time, you mentioned college football. Paul asked the question, has changed so dramatically, or Craig did, in three years. How much of that is on your plate every day 
that occupies your time about the future. You just got the opportunity to be a part of a Power Five, and there's always these things out there, speculation, super conferences or whatever. How much of that is on your mind? Yeah, I think more than anything, it's on my mind a lot. And you have to adapt. I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, to be successful this day and time, you have to be able to adapt because they're changing rules left and right, uh, you know, just think about last year at this time, you know, we have two new or four new, four new conference members from the West Coast that we didn't know about. So I think you just got to have an open mind. Um, you know, there's a lot of stress that goes when the portal window opens up till the time it closes. A lot of strategy that goes in that. Um, so, yeah, it's on your mind a lot. And I, Like I said, I, I think the big thing for me is I love when we get to spring ball and I love when we get to fall camp and you can get out there and be a coach and, do what you love to do. Thank you for your time, Coach. I know you have a lot on your plate. Gus Malzahn, head coach at UCF, with us to open up the show here on this Thursday. Gus Malzahn and UCF with us on 365 Sports. And appreciate Justin Wilson, media relations at UCF, for setting that up for us. Yeah, we've been able to talk to him uh, a few times over the last couple of years. Always enjoy the conversation, and uh, they've been very active in the portal, and I think uh, they're not tampering expectations. There's a feeling that they could be in the mix, even though they're not one of the first two or three teams that are mentioned, kind of like we started off the show discussing. Um, they are a team that could sneak up and be pretty good, or, or not even sneak up if you already expect them to be pretty good because of K.J. Jefferson and Penny Boone and all the other moves that they made. So um, you heard it there, trying to shore up that defense, and uh, that was certainly problematic for them at times last year. Um, so if that can improve, you know the offense is going to be there in some form or fashion, if not outright great. So I, I think that certainly they're a school you look at that could make a little bit of noise. And, I mean, there's some moments I – you know, thought like whether to bring it up or not, and I didn't really know how it fit into the overall conversation. But you know, that Baylor game last year—that should have been a win. <laughs> that should have absolutely have been a win, and they just melted down late in that game. And so, otherwise, you're looking at a you know a different outcome just last year alone with the, the flip of that one game and uh, being a, a team that uh, can say you went seven and six as opposed to six and seven. And so, you're that close to being above 500 should have been. And so how far away are you from eight or nine wins? We start talking about eight or nine wins, and you're, you're really talking about something. So, And who knows in the Big 12? I mean, nine wins might have you like in second place in the, in the league for all we know. We don't know what it's going to look like just yet. But, yeah, I, I think that's definitely a team that you, you put some marks by and, and take note of moving into 2024. I wish I would have asked him this question. Mark Daniels told me he's got a UCF broadcast, a voice of uh, UCF Athletics. He was in Arkansas when McFadden and Jones, I think, were there. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, legendary high school yeah, coach. Yeah, the, would have been pretty interesting to uh, ask what he may see, not trying to compare Harvey and Boone to them, but they're both really good about are there any kind of comparisons yeah. at all. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and... and um, yeah, he's a legend. Like everybody in Arkansas loves loves Gus Malzahn. Dude, I, I first started hearing about Mitch Mustaine. Like that was yeah. like first yep. some of the first recruiting yeah. stuff I ever heard about was the Springdale kids and that that group that they had. And uh, that's when I was really first ever starting to follow recruiting whatsoever in the early two thousands. And I remember that vividly of what a big deal that group was. Uh, Mustaine's the one that I always remember off the top because he was the quarterback. But mm. yeah, Gus was was uh, right there in that territory. So that's pretty – I mean, all due respect, though, that's a pretty heavy – that was a that's a pretty damn good group. So if they can come close to having – you know, comparable to having a, a McFadden-Jones situation, then Big 12 certainly better watch out because you throw K.J. Jefferson into that mix, it's going to be hell on wheels to try and stop them. Well, I mean, like – they yeah, don't, fourth and one, man, you could you, – or even third and two, whatever. First and ten. They don't have to – throw the ball that much i mean they really don't like they um well that was always the misconception with yeah. the browse offenses yeah. which are kind of living in the same universe mm -hmm. and certainly i think those two kind of played off each other when you look back at mm -hmm. when they were developing uh those offenses it never gets the credit for the running game that, yeah. it, that it should it, it always gets completely Ever. overlooked the yep. running game every time to yep. your point paul it's mm -hmm. everybody thinks oh it's just pass 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 it's like no that's not at all what it is no. 